So as you can probably hear and see in the background there, I'm running my Via Rail Coors Light F40PH-2D um, set, I guess. It's a limited uh, set from Rapido that uh, they, are, they are prototype locomotives. Uh, some of you know I have a Kool-Aid locomotive as well. Um, that's going to be in the review just a little bit. Um, but this review isn't just a review. This is also about operating these locomotives, consisting these locomotives, making the most out of them. And so I really hope you enjoy and appreciate um, the effort that's in this and the quality of these models. If you have any questions about these engines, I'm happy to break out the book. I've got one in my backpack at work and one in my layout at home. I have been studying this thing probably harder than I studied most of college. Don't tell my parents that. But uh, no, there's a ton of info in here. There's some great detail. It's even some prototype information, which is great for me because I'm just now getting into modeling via um, at all. And uh, it's um, proto freelance. So I'm trying to model actual consists, just not in the locations that they would normally go. So again, please enjoy the review. If you have any comments or feedback, please feel free to put them down in the comments. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I always appreciate it. And again, enjoy the video. We'll see you in the next one. Good evening everyone, or well, at least it's evening where I'm at in southeastern Wisconsin, but I have something special for you guys. This is the Coors Light Silver Bullet Express from Rapido in HO scale. So this model is specifically for people 19 years old and up. Usually it's 21, but uh, being that this is in Canada, or depending on what state you're in, it could be a little bit different. So we got this really cool box that it comes in, and of course we've got two locomotives, so you have two boxes. And this is the only way to purchase this set, or either of these locomotives, is to buy them together. This is the only way to get them. So this set <clears throat> goes for $539.99 on sale at Hiawatha, and retails for $639.90. So let's crack these guys open and take a look. Now, the biggest reason I'm buying this set is not because I love Coors Light. Because I'll tell you right now, that is like the last thing you will catch me drinking. And it would literally have to be free, ice cold, and yeah. You're probably not going to catch me drinking Coors Light. So, it's getting tough to find via rail equipment in HO scale. They haven't had a release in a while. And... <clears throat> This was basically, besides another Kool-Aid locomotive, my only option. So I decided to go with this, and um, I figure if anything, it's kind of neat, and maybe uh, someone will be interested in buying one off of me if I decide to sell the other. <clears throat> I really only wanted two locomotives so I could do uh, uh, double-ended trains and have... Uh, return service without having to turn a train around, um, at least as far as my modeling practices go. Another reason I wanted these engines is because some of the ones I did find in either of these paint schemes um, were only available without ditch lights. Um, maybe not that one, but anyways, I wanted to make sure I had ditch lights, so I went ahead, got the cores. So let's take one out of the box and see how it looks. <clears throat> All right, so here's your information about the F40PH2-2D. You've got it in French. You've got it in English. Different instructions about it. I'll get into that um, a little bit more when I go to start reading it. White River Productions advertisement. Um, actually, I've become a huge fan of the Model Railroad News and RMC. Um, they just have more content, especially than Model Railroader. And Model Railroad News, what's really cool is they get in really in depth into the model and the history of the prototype. Um, I've got a good, <laughs> a good chunk of my uh, clippings that I take out from my favorite stories is all out of these two guys here. I've got a couple of things out of the um, uh, trains and railroads. And then I've got one or two articles out of the Rail Fan and Railroad. I just don't read it that much. But I really love the news because it has so much info, especially with the auto racks. It was one of my favorite articles of all time. So I'll get through the foam, and here we are. We got our model in the box. See that the 
block of ice as I've heard it referred to uh, has moved around a little bit but no big deal slide it out here I don't know about you folks but I usually don't save the foam all it does is make a mess so put that aside very carefully and gently remove it excellent so we'll just kind of walk around here a little bit take a look so overall I gotta say this thing's pretty sharp in fact I think I'm gonna turn down the lighting here getting a lot of glare there that's better all right so overall um you can see with the extra paint there seems to be some sort of texture almost to this um, no big deal uh, once you put on some weathering you will hardly notice it and these have been out long enough that there's plenty to weather um, good roof detail and everything I can see a little bit of a paint imperfection here um, some imperfections in the plastic uh, not a big deal to me um, I bought this for a specific reason and the fact that it's Coors Light um, I guess is an added bonus I'll uh, come around to the front you can see kind of the windscreen here to help deflect bugs and rocks and um, wind and whatnot from the windshield. You got your Canadian flag up top, ditch lights down here, and then a pretty pretty bland front end there with just a Coors Light logo and uh, your headlights. There's a little plate right here you can see, very sharp. All the hoses and all the little lines down here are very nicely done. There's a little blemish right here on the plow, again not the biggest deal once you um let's see if that rubs off no um add a little weathering to this you won't even notice it <clears throat> coming over to this side we can see we have a bent handrail here i don't believe that was from me i think that's just bent looks like it might have some other issues here because now it's bent the other way I think that's just too long. I, if you look up towards the top here, I don't think it's sitting in the hole quite right. And it's a wire grab iron, so it's just not sitting right on there. I'm going to leave it. Stuff happens. It might have caught on something um, in the prototype. Who knows? Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So getting to the back side here, you've got your grab irons. you got the details here again. Very nicely done. Excellent quality. Um, nothing looks broken or loose. <coughs> And then you've got um, just a single headlight, your porthole window. Um, you can see there's something there, the cast um, frame or whatever. So no big deal. Um, overall, excellent model. Beautiful. So we'll box this guy up. If I can find a Sharpie here real quick. My drawer of a mess. Not. So what I'll do is I'll just put them back in here. Normally once I take a locomotive out of the uh, blister packaging or the block of ice, I usually just keep it out and label it so I don't mix up the boxes. So I'm going to take off the next guy. Same information, nothing different. So this one's got a different um, wrap. I think it's wrapped. Um, not painted. I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments if you know. I do appreciate that. Um, we all make mistakes. We're all wrong from time to time. And if you're willing to tell me where I'm wrong in a polite and reasonable fashion, I'm happy to admit it and give credit where credit is due. So we'll pull this guy out. Looks like the plastic sticking to him a little bit. Just a little extra, ex excess oil underneath it seems like. Put that film back in there for the top. Close this guy up. Put him back in his box. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, so overall you can see a couple differences in the wrap. This one's a little bit simpler. This one's got a little more complexity. I'm not sure which one was done first. Um, maybe 6408 was done first and they thought, hey, let's spruce it up. Or maybe 6445 was done first. And like, hey, we don't really need all that. Um, but either way, it's kind of neat. I've seen these in service on YouTube um, on various channels. Um, and I'll put some links in the description to them. Um, together, separated. Uh, front uh, elephant style like this and whatnot. I plan on running them back to back on my commuter train. 
um, and eventually I would like to have a larger train um, for different services uh, for Via Rail and we'll see when uh, Rapido comes out with stuff. I'm currently waiting for the uh, baggage dorm to come out. <clears throat> so you can see on the front here some more differences with the paint. Just a little bit more detail. Different color for the Coors Light, a little larger logo. But we have the same quality as far as the details and everything go. And then for the side, nothing major has changed. Um, I can see this grab iron straight here. So it's probably just, you know, a little too long and it's got nowhere to go but sideways. So better that than completely broken. And I want to point out here, I didn't really do this in the last model. But if you look right here, all that beautiful detail underneath. Rapido really does an amazing job. And there isn't as much on the locomotives to see. But it does look quite nice. You can see all the plumbing underneath there. Let's see if I can rotate this a little bit more. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'd hate to say it, but a Rapido train completely flipped over in an accident on the model railroad would still look pretty good. And of course, MLW and Made in China with the Rapido logo up there. And getting to the back, absolutely nothing special about this. Same as the last one. Again, beautiful details back here. And then you've got your single headlight. And that's about it. So next, we'll uh, put them on the test track, um, on the layout, and see how they do. Alright, so I've got my engines here. Uh, I've got 6405 that's the Kool-Aid pulled up. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up this fellow here. So we can see there's one ditch light on for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but if I turn on ditch lights, number six, the other one comes on. So um not quite sure what that's about. And if I hit the headlight, the headlight does come on appropriately. So I guess there's not too many issues there. So we're going to head and program on the main. We're going to put in the locomotive number. Cool. All right. And let's start her up. Alright, so there's the factory volume. Uh, I have not changed anything with that. Um, now, while I'm not too thrilled about the ditch lights, I'm not too worried about it, honestly. For, for all I know, it might be a new safety feature. Um, and before we get too far into testing them, I do want to test to see if this runs with my other locomotive here, which is 6405. So we're going to set up a consist. I'm going to do old style. So it seems pretty close. So I'm not too worried about the third look mode of being off. Um, I don't have the sound fired up on the Kool-Aid, but I'm glad to know that they're um, kind of running together at least. Um, so with that out of the way, um, let's go to the next step. Let's try these guys out and run them around a little bit, shall we?
All right, so we've got our F40PH here, uh, dash two. And so I uh, put a little time in running these guys around. As you can see, I took a couple of cars off from the initial uh, shot of these guys. And I put some, uh, put probably a dozen laps on it, just letting it run around the layout. And what I will say is that one locomotive is a little bit quicker than the other. The one in the back is pushing a little bit. But overall, I got to say they're pretty solid. Uh, the second locomotive, as it runs by here, you'll notice has got a little bit of gear noise. Now, that one hasn't run as much as the lead locomotive here. I'm going to put some more time in in both directions so it has a chance to break in. Um, I hate when people do a review and they say, oh, it's so noisy. Well, if it gets quieter over a break in, then that's the proper way to rate it, I think, because they still require a break in period. So I'm going to let that happen and we'll see what we get at the end. But now you'll be able to take a little listen to what I'm talking about. All right, so while the engines are breaking in, I've got them going in both directions. Um, they've mostly been going the other direction. It's both forward. Mostly been going the other direction for maybe half hour tops. So according to this wonderful manual, very well written, um, with a little comedic enterprise in it, it says one to two hours in each direction at high and low speeds. So I'm going to consider this low speed and I'll take some time uh, to switch it back and forth. In the meantime, I'm going to read this very handy book. All right, so while these engines are breaking in, uh, I've only got the sound on one of them. I kind of want to keep an eye on the sound with the, uh, or the sound of the gears and the other locomotive that's a little bit loud. And in the meantime, I'm going to read this handy dandy book. It's got some nice combi on it. All right, so here's our train. This is the locomotive that I've been uh, trying to quiet down a little bit because of the gears are a little bit loud. Once the sound's on, I don't think I'll notice it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this consist and we're gonna pick this locomotive here in that 64 weight. And because no one ever reads this wonderful little book that is for this engine that you get I'm going to go through and read a few things out of here because I think if you're like me, you're going to find it very handy, very helpful, and very insightful in operating this locomotive, especially if you're looking to operate it prototypically. Model operation. Now, this is right out of the book, so definitely give all the credit to Rapido for this. We've tried our best to simulate the head-end power mode switch with the F4 and F5 function buttons on your DCC controller. Once the F40PH2D model is on the track, Press F8 and turn on the sounds and put your locomotive into idle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off 6445. 
and we can start this over with 6408. So we're going to turn on F8, get our standard sound startup function. So we turn on F8 to start up, to turn on the sounds and put our locomotive into idle. We'll press F4 to put it into standby mode and the prime mover will rev up to 720 RPMs. If you don't press F4, the locomotive operates like a freight engine. When your F40 PH-2 is in standby, you can put it into run mode by pressing F5. If you don't need to go into standby, then just hit F4 and F5 in rapid succession. The prime mover will have straight to 893 RPM and your locomotive will be in run. It will move when you advance the throttle. This simulates the head end power mode switch directly in the run. So I'm in standby right now and it shouldn't move if I throttle up and it's not moving. So if you have F4 selected and not F5, it will not move. So I'm going to press F5 and that should put us, put us in the HEP mode. So now if we go to move, let me take off the other locomotive here since we are not pan system. Not my greasy hands here. I'll turn on the headlights and ditch lights for safety. And now we should move normally. Okay. H E or I keep saying H E P, it's HEP. It says that in here, if I keep saying HEP, you can point at me and laugh. I'm going to turn that off for a second here, just because that is really loud. And then we'll power down here. There we go. I just want to finish reading this, if you don't mind. If you want to, feel free to skip this. Every DCC system treats consisting a little bit differently. On some systems, you will need to put your locomotives into run before you consist them. On most systems, like this, you can decide which functions are controlled by consist address so you can switch all of your loc units into run simultaneously. You can do this with the loc programmer when you go in and you select um, where you put in your address, scroll down to the bottom of that page, and it'll let you select different functions to activate while in consist. In VIA practice, when two F40 PH2D locomotives are operating in a consist, both providing HEP, so both should be, run, should be operated in run. This applies whether the locomotives are running elephant style or back to back, and it applies when both locomotives are at one end of the train or top and tailing the train, so one on each end. Note that top and tail or push pull operation can only be used with LRC or HEP2 or HEP2 passenger cars and certain HEP1 baggage cars, 8618 through 8623. Other VIA passenger cars do not have the necessary multiple unit cables to allow push pull operation. When more than two locomotives are in consist, only the last two are providing HEP. The lead locomotives can be operated at idle. The last two are providing HEP and the lead locomotives can be operated in idle. Sorry, I thought I may have said that wrong. On J trains, two trains coupled nose to tail and operated as one. Both units are powered and run and providing HEP. If you're running your F40 PH-2 with an EF9B or other non-HEP units, you don't have to worry about F4 and F5 as HEP is not needed. Just operate your locomotive in idle. Now, HEP and how to turn off this annoying feature. So I'm going to put this here, and hopefully this thing will uh, settle here for you. You're going to need to change some CVs, and I recommend you do it in this order. Yes, definitely in that order. So CV 31 to 16, 32 to 2, 413 to 128, and CV 415 to 16. 
Now, there is a lot of good information in here, and actually this answered all my questions about operating a VIA train. Um, and something else I wanted to know, let's see. This also gives you information about prototype info, about how um, head and power works. And then if you continue, um, where is it? It talks about the different functions. Here's that. Go through here. And the red classification lights. So the F40PH-2D is regularly used in push-pull service. The rear locomotive should have the red markers turned on. We did not include working white or green classification lights at this, as this would have caused cost to skyrocket for lights that are rarely used. There isn't a lot of room up there. So, um, because I run, um, or I was planning to run with the proto throttle, I'll need to find a way to add those in consist so they come on um, when I activate F10. So that'll be an interesting feature to sneak in there. And you only want it to operate on the locomotive that is in reverse. So my guess is you'll have to select F10 while in reverse um, and in consist, which won't be the most difficult thing to do. Um, you can do that with your uh, Digitrax and NCE uh, cabs. So when I go to program this, um, actually whether or not it's for the proto throttle doesn't matter, I'll go ahead and put that in there. In fact, I might do a little video on that here in just a second. Now the next feature I want to talk about is this awesome sp slow speed thingy. And that is literally what they say right here. And basically what that says is there's an awesome trick that you can use to get even better slow speed running and smoother operation. It's called the automatic motor tuning feature. This feature will automatically adjust the back EMF in most cases and give you phenomenal slow speed performance. In order to use this automatic adjustment, you need to use ops mode programming, i.e. programming on the main. Make sure your locomotive is in forward and that you have lots of room in front of it on your main line. Set CV54 to a value of zero then get out of programming mode and turn on the bell. We'll say that again, make sure you have plenty of room in front of your locomotive and is not headed for the layout edge and the basement floor. Your F40PH-2D will quickly take off at full speed and gradually slow down to a stop while the decoder reads the motor responses. You'll have fabulous motor control after you do this. If you ever have to reset your locomotive, you can do the automatic adjustment again, it just takes a few seconds. Now this sounds oddly familiar. I want to say I've done this before. I don't think I've done it on any of my F40s from Rapido, um, but I feel like I've done this before. I want to know if this is just a Rapido thing or perhaps this is a low sound thing. I should probably start reading more manuals. But we're going to try this right now. We're going to see what happens. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can get a better view. And let's give it a shot. So we've got our NCE throttle here. So we want to go into program on the main. We've got locomotive 6408. We want to program the CV. Locomotive's already in forward. Actually, you know what? I'm going to check that just to be case. Yep, okay, we're in forward. Cool. So program on the main, locomotive. We're going to go by CV. And we want to double check here. It's CV5454. Enter. Value 0. Enter. We get out of this, and we hit the bell. Holy smokes. So it did just go nuts. It is moving just little by little back and forth. So it's going to take off quickly at full speed and gradually slow down to a stop while the decoder reads the motor responses. So I'm not exactly sure when this thing is done. It wasn't exactly slowly to zero. I'm going to assume that it's done. So let's try 
Uh, 128 speed steps, and we'll just go with one notch. Okay, so that's notch one, notch two, three, four, and now I'm using the scroll a little bit. That's that's pretty good slow speed operation. I can't complain about that. So we're going back to 28 speed steps, going in reverse. So the factory momentum on there, I can't say that that's spectacularly better um, without being a little biased because, of course, every time you do something, sometimes you give a little biased review. So I want to say it does well. Um, I mean, Rapido's great out of the box, but just to make sure everything's synced up, I'm going to do that to the rest of these locomotives. But don't worry, because you're going to see this in hyperlapse. That wasn't forward. Well, I'm glad I didn't actually put it in the hyperlapse. I was just going to hyperlapse it in post-production, but that was not forward. Um, it just slammed into my train here, killing everyone in it instantly. And um, I have no idea why it went in reverse, because the throttle clearly says forward. <clears throat> Unedited. That says forward. 64.45. Um, so I just want to make sure that it actually goes forward, and it does. We are not in consist. Okay. So, we're going to try that again. I have some old programming. Programming on the main. 6445, enter. 54, enter. 0, enter. And turn on the bell. There, now it's going forward. So now that the bell's ringing, I'm guessing that means it's done. Um... Kind of a scary process, but uh, it's working. So again, I'm not sure why it went in reverse the first time, but it seems to be fixed now. So I'm going to do the last locomotive, which is my Kool-Aid. In fact, I got a couple of hairs or something to pull off of here. This locomotive's seen some time, so and it's seen several layouts. It's treated me very well. I'm very happy with it. So this is 6405. And just to prove I am in forward, I'm going to move it forward a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, Off mode programming. Program the right number. CV 54. Set to zero. Enter. And bell. And bell. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, pretty abrupt. Um, and I just want to make sure all the locomotives are running the same. So that's why I did this. Um, I don't know that's going to make a huge difference, but I did want to point that out. Now, as I showed you guys before, um, I set the decoders... Let me get everything over here quick. I set up the decoders so that F10 activates only the class lights in reverse. Um, what I'm going to do is because the only time I'll be using the class lights is in reverse, what I am considering is just setting up so it's F0 in reverse. So no matter what, the class lights are going to come on. When you're going backwards, which is great for basically any operation with the local programmer, I could also set that up so that it goes or activates with F5. So when you have your HEP mode on, that's when it's activated in reverse. So I think that's probably what I'm going to go with is one of those two, just to make life a little easier, one less thing to select. And then what I 
Another thing I want to do is set up my proto throttle so that way I have the correct buttons selected so that 4 and 5 are easily accessible. So with that said, I'm going to reposition the locomotives and we're going to do a final review. So we did an unboxing and basic review of the locomotives. We went in depth a little bit in the programming and how these locomotives run. Um, I, I still have the issue with this ditch light coming on for some reason. I didn't notice anything in the programming about why that's on. All I can assume is that it's for some reason on with um, the number boards and the uh, truck step lighting, which I guess I can show you guys at the end. I didn't really show that, um, but from what I recall, there are actual lights underneath that'll show um, the trucks and the steps or whatever. Uh, but overall, I just want to say these are amazing locomotives. Uh, the Kool-Aid one in the back there, yeah, it's not about that locomotive, but it's the same guts underneath and the same sound and details and everything else. And I just got to say, that locomotive is put up with hours upon hours of service, and I just want to say that Rapido does an amazing job of building a quality locomotive with great detail and great craftsmanship. The motors are great, the drives are great. I have no doubt these will give me years of reliable service and that the LRC cars behind them are going to be along the way. So one of the reasons I bought these locomotives, um, one of several, is because I put a lot of runtime on that Kool-Aid engine on 6405 there. And I wanted to kind of split it up because I'm going to be pulling more equipment with it shortly. And so I thought, well, I need a different paint scheme. And... So I went to Hiawatha Hobbies since there's nothing online and I found these guys so I picked these up. Only way to get them was a two pack and I'm honestly really glad that I did. So I'm going to have a little bit more fun with the programming. Um, I, I said I'm going to change the class lights onto something a little bit simpler to use so it's less effort. I might put function 4 and 5 both under function 5 and skip sk standby it just goes straight to uh, notch 8 and run. So that way when I'm operating my proto throttle, I know what button that is already. I don't have to press two. Um, with a few more hours of runtime on these guys, I've got no issues. There's been no derailments. There's no lighting fe features that don't work that I've noticed. Um, you can tell that there is just a lot of effort and a lot of care putting into designing these. If you do actually read this book, which I highly recommend you do, um, there is a nice section there where they think everyone who was involved and it was a massive project. It's clear and it's all come together so well on these locomotives. So hats off to you guys, Rapido. There's a reason why you guys are my new number one favorite. Um, knocking scale trains off that tiny little mantle that I have. Uh, just the extreme, and, I'm, <laughs> and I mean extreme quality. I mean, this stuff is great. I can't wait for more stuff to come out. I'm still looking for more LRC cars. I'm hoping that they do the... Um, stainless steel fluted side uh, single level commuter cars that I see via running. I'm starting to get more and more into via. Uh, after reading the book and watching some YouTube videos, I'm getting more and more into the feel of wanting to model some Canadian passenger operations. And so my layouts kind of change towards that. These are my favorite passenger cars to run with the lit, lit interiors, uh, the working marker lights and whatnot. Um, it is kind of curbing my modeling a little bit, so I'm kind of changing my layout up so that I'm modeling the Canadian uh, Michigan border coming into Wisconsin. And so that's kind of my justification for Milwaukee Road and via rail kind of crossing rails, so to speak. So for those of you who don't follow me on Facebook, uh, I'm on the Chicago Milwaukee Northwestern. That is my personal modeling page uh, and blog. And I share product reviews, uh, announcements, uh, all kinds of, of the latest model news and then of course news for my layout stuff I've purchased you guys are free to post on there as well and I'd like to thank Superior Scenics for their sponsorship of my channel and the Tony Cook of Model Road News who has been a huge help to me lately uh, especially with uh, putting out new reviews and helping out um, with some prototype info and just being a great friend he has been a huge um, advocate of me basically kind of getting back into this a little bit more um it's been a lot of fun talking to him and william sampson uh mitch mcadams roderick irving i love you guys you've all been an inspiration to me to keep moving forward with this hobby to move forward with youtube and the reviews so thank you all so much please check out the links in the description there's plenty of them down there and we'll see you guys in another video in the meantime here's a montage